Hey, hey, party people, it's a beautiful day for music. It's a wonderful day for sound. Quick shout out to my patrons. You guys make the videos possible. Make sure you guys like and subscribe. It really helps out the channel. Today, as you saw in the title, we're gonna be going over a bunch of different drum pads and some of the things I actually look for when I'm kind of picking out uh, the kind of drum pad that I'm gonna be playing. I have a few here with me today, like six of them. Spoiler alert, I do not currently own my favorite drum pad. So make sure you stay into the end uh, for me to kind of talk about that a little bit, um, I end up giving a lot of the pads that I actually like. I give them away to a lot of the schools that I'll go to. Um, there'll always be some random kid who I see a whole lot of promise in, um, a whole lot of potential, and I'll give them sticks or I'll give them various pads and things. So that's why I don't currently own that particular drum pad. Let's hop right into it. And we're gonna be going over these things sort of one by one in a few different categories. Category number one, it's just a regular decibel, um, playing eights, then category two, just playing a regular buzz roll, more so applicable to um, uh, Swiss drumming, pipe drumming, concert band drumming. Of course, everybody looks for something a little bit different within their practice pads. And even when I'm playing something more so on the concert side of things, or if I'm practicing just chops for drum set stuff, I'm playing fritz grip with my drum set sticks, I'm looking for a very different type of pad than what I'm actually looking for for marching percussion. So those are some things to kind of take into account. First up is the Movement Drum Company. It's the one you've probably seen in a pretty good amount of, of my videos here lately. Somebody actually gave me this pad, not the actual company but you can definitely check out a link in the description. Things that I like about it first, thing number one, it has this kind of rubber backing on the back that kind of separates it from whatever the surface is that you're playing on. And when I'm actually playing um, on a solid surface, it gives me a really good feel. Um, one of the things I don't like is that it actually has this plastic rim, which makes a super loud um, sort of rim shot sound. Check out these kind of excerpts from a few different pads with me playing rim shots. One of the things that I actually do like about the rubber um, is that it has a nice amount of firmness. So it really uh, replicates a marching snare drum a whole, whole lot. I would actually say it's a little bit too firm, however, if I'm trying to replicate a drum set or if I'm trying to represent, uh, replicate an actual concert snare drum. So I wouldn't use it for those purposes, but I really like it um, for playing with bigger sticks. A little bit of a con with this particular thing um, is I'm a, I'm a huge fan of laminates. This one's a little bit dirty at the moment uh, because I haven't been using it. It's just kind of been sitting around in my garage, this laminate here. Um, it sounds really good when it's on there. Uh, and as long as you don't ever really have to take it off, um, you might be pretty might be pretty good, but if you are playing with some uh, bigger sticks, it starts to kind of warp the pad a little bit, and it starts to get a little bit of air underneath it. So you'll have very different sounding and feeling rebound coming off of the drum. If you really care about that sort of thing, the way it feels pushing back in your hand feels very different, and just like slightly off to one bit or another bit, um, it it feels very different in your hand. So. Um, that's thing number one. Um, so if you have the ability to get extra ones or extra parts as far as laminate when you actually order these, definitely do that. Thing number two, it's incredibly hard <laughs> to get this actually off of the pad sometimes. Sometimes it'll be on there nice and good. Sometimes it'll come off depending on how long you sort of played with it on there. But if you want a nice quick transition, sometimes it gets really, really weird. It is getting weird. I don't care. 
yourself, be yourself. It is getting weird. I don't care. Mama always said, be yourself, be yourself. It is getting weird. I don't care. Mama always said. Next up, this is actually just the covering protective pad that came with the the movement drum pad and I really like it because it's this kind of rubbery side on one end and then the other side is a little bit more uh, shiny it's kind of satin here so it's a very nice look and you might have seen for some of the more simple foundational videos that I've posted recently that I've been using just this on this stool here and what it gives me is just the ability to talk over it it's a very quiet combination it doesn't give me the kind of pushback or bounce that i would really want out of a pad in almost any circumstance but it definitely lets me get the point across with me speaking in a normal voice so you can actually hear me in the videos it's terrible for buzz rolls though like it's, it's no response whatsoever it's definitely something that pads that have a little bit more um, tension in, in the head or in the rubber or definitely something that's either plastic or laminate on top will definitely um, kind of uh, excel at as if you're talking about buzz rolls. Next up is the HQ Real Feel. So I really like this pad. It's right kind of in the middle of things for me. It has um, a little bit of a, a cushiony feel to the, to the pushback. There's a little bit of a give to it. And things so if I am working on like some chops type of stuff and I really want to get those those fulcrum pieces in there if I'm working on my fingers you'll really find me playing with this sort of pad here um, one of the things I really like to use this particular pad for since it has a little bit more of give a little bit more of cushiony action I'll be practicing a lot of my drum set stuff on there so I'll be playing kind of French grip with my drum set sticks and it's really good for me to practice various things especially with my shots because they don't become too overbearing on this particular pad. Love it, love it, love it, love it, love it. Next up is the old school <laughs> sixth grade model, right? Now, I actually still really like playing on these pads. The only thing is that it gets super overbearing if you happen to play with it with big sticks. Uh, but if you actually play with it with smaller sticks, as far as like concert sticks, like a medium size, um, or maybe even like drum set type things, it, it really works out. And especially if you're working on some of your buzzed articulations, it's really good as long as you don't start to overplay the pad. They do have this kind of Phillips screwdriver sort of thing on here, so you can change the tension a little bit. Um, but yeah, these pads are very good for a very specific thing. And it's, as long as you're not playing too loud or with sticks that are too big, these pads are actually really good. I, I kind of like them. Neat. So next up, I have this Zymox ID pad. I've had this for a super long time. Um, somebody actually bought it for me back in the day. Um, all of these pads here, um, none of them actually came for the companies. It's important that I actually say that. Um, the only sponsored company that I am with currently is Vic Firth, and I'm uh, an educational sponsor, so not necessarily an artist for that company. So you might see me playing with different types of implements on my actual professional gigs, but from an educational cap uh, capacity, um, I am a Vic Firth artist. So just so you know that um, this pad has two different sides. So it has this back side, which feels very similar to the, uh, the normal non laminate part of a, uh, a stock pad, if you've ever played with that. And it feels very similar to the, the, the moment pad. Um, that I was playing earlier. Some things that I like about it. Thing number one, it feels really good whether I'm playing with uh, smaller sticks or bigger sticks, and that goes especially for both sides. On the actual laminate side, uh, my laminate has cracked in two or three different places because I have had this for maybe six-ish, seven-ish years and things, but it still sounds really good, and there's a lot of places on here that feel super, super great. Um, a little bit of word of uh, warning for you. There's been a lot of people who've had a whole lot of problems with Zymox. I'm not gonna go into the whole story, but they have major customer service issues. So that can definitely be a con. And I don't really recommend these pads to pretty much anybody. If you wanna go with a pad that's similar to this, there's plenty of other alternatives, which I'll get into later on in the video. Awesome, awesome. It's a good old faithful here, just playing on the wood, right? That is definitely something that I do a lot, especially if I'm outside, I'm not in my house. It gives me a lot of feedback, especially if my hands are relaxed. I wanna hear the resonance of my sticks. And it sounds very different to me if I'm closing my hands down or if I'm letting the stick breathe. I can get a lot of um, 
sort of vibration feedback if I'm playing on something as hard as the wood. And if my hands are too hard on the stick, if I'm applying too much pressure, I'll definitely know because it changes the sound of the sticks in my hand. So if that's something that you care about in your particular playing, maybe playing on something that's very hard or very dense um, could give you a little bit of extra sound information just to have a little peek underneath the curtain as far as what the pressure in your hand is like and how that relates to your actual uh, drumstick. Now, as I tell you before, my favorite, favorite, favorite drum pad ever, ever, ever. I'm looking at actually buying another one very soon here. It's just straight up the heavy hitter pads from Vic Firth. It has really nothing to do with Vic Firth. They've never given me any of those pads. I've bought pretty much every single one that I've had and I've given it away because I love them so much and I want other people to enjoy in that. So um, I like the stock pad, which is sort of the thicker one, right? And I like it with the rubber and without the rubber, really depending on what I'm doing. And then of course I like the slim pad. Now for me, I like the slim pad without the actual laminate. Um, it already has a very snappy response to it and the rubber is nice and dense. So the stick comes off of it very quickly. Um, the actual stock pad is a little thicker, so it's a, it has a little bit more give to it, but I'll definitely go with the laminate every single time on that one because I think it's the perfect um, rebounded response with the added benefit of having a nice buzzed articulation sound so you can really work on your buzz rolls and it can handle bigger sticks and smaller sticks equally as well so that is my 100 percent favorite pad of all time let me know your favorite pad down in the description um be nice to other people if they have other pads that are a little bit different if you have a pad that you think i should review next time um let me know maybe i'll uh the next time i'm on amazon or the next time I'm shopping on whatever uh, the, the site is, Steve Weiss, Sweetwater, whatever it is, um, I might look at picking it up if I've missed one of your favorite, if I've missed one of your favorite pads. Once again, it's been a beautiful day for music. It's been a wonderful day for sound. If you wanna check out any of these pads, the links will be down in the description. Deuce.